Hey everybody, and welcome back to Linear Algebra Online. Um, so the plan for today is actually really to jump into the nuts and bolts of how we compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So um, let's get into it. So we're going to start with this example right here. We're going to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for that. Um, so we know, we talked about this last time. Um, actually, I just looked at this. I don't like that those x's look different. <laughs> These x's are the same x. Um, but if we have this, right, then um, it makes sense, right, that ax minus lambda x should equal zero, right, zero vector. Um, and then um, you can basically take, um, like, x out, like, factor x out on the right. And you have a minus <coughs> lambda i um, times that vector x equals zero vector. Um, so if you think about what this says, right, it's saying that um, if x is an eigenvector, it is in, um, it is something that gets sent to zero, right, by this matrix, right? So that, by definition, means that it's in the null space of A minus lambda I, right, that matrix. And if the null space is non-trivial, okay, so we're talking about, you know, it's non-trivial because something eigenvector is in here. Um, then the matrix sends some stuff to zero. It loses some sort of dimensionality, loses some info. So, you know, we know that that means that the matrix is basically non-invertible. Basically, we have no way to unpack that you know, reverse that process and unpack some of that stuff that was sent to zero, like back into the original, like higher dimension. Um, you know, we've talked about this with like the vertical line test and how it relates to that stuff. But basically, there's no inverse, right? Um, and then we know that if something is non invertible, that happens if and only if the determinant of the matrix is zero. And that comes out of like the definition, like when we have like, uh, we have that one over determinant of a part in the inverse definition. Um, and that determinant of a being zero is like, you know, that's the issue on why we can't do that, um, get that inverse, like computationally, okay? Um, so this means that, like, the kind of logical place to start is to check the determinant of a minus lambda i and, like, literally set that equal to zero. And that really does give us the um, basis for, um, that's not linear algebra basis, but um, for how we're going to proceed. So we're going to basically, to do any of these eigenvector eigenvalue problems, we're going to start off here. We're going to start off by setting, that's like really set, the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. So let's do that. Um, so the determinant of a minus lambda i would just look like you know, 3 minus lambda, and then, you know, it's it's a minus lambda i, so you'll have just the normal old 1 here. There's like it's 1 minus 0, right? And also 1 minus 0 here, but then you'll have 3 minus lambda there. And uh, we are literally setting the determinant of that thing equal to 0. So the determinant, um, we have 3 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda, and then we have minus 1 if to equal zero. Um, and so basically we get um, a polynomial, um, nine minus six lambda plus lambda squared minus one equals zero. Um, if you combine a little more like terms, you get lambda squared minus six lambda plus eight. It's amazing how everything is algebra in math. It's such an important course, algebra two. Um, so we factor this thing, and we get lambda equals 4 and 2. So the weird thing, I think, for me maybe, was when I first saw eigenvalue eigenvector problems, um, we're not actually getting, like, we, we started off this idea with figuring out, like, what x would need to be um, to get and to become an eigenvector, and we talked about this null space thing, it's not invertible, and zero, and determinant. But the weird thing is, computationally, what you actually find first is the eigenvalues. So these are actually the two um, eigenvalues for um, 
a. And when you do these kind of problems, you find eigenvalues before you find eigenvectors. And just on a side note, because it is um, pretty important, so uh, this uh, right here, this is what we call the characteristic equation for one of these problems. And kind of similarly, this, you know, polynomial that you get out of these, um, this is called the characteristic um, polynomial. And those two terms you hear like thrown around a lot in linear algebra. So you might just see something that says like, you know, so-and-so has a cubic characteristic polynomial uh, with roots, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, those then are eigenvalues. So like you'll read that kind of statement a lot in like papers and different things like that. So it's important to know like these two words. So this term characteristic um, equation, just when once we've set the determinant, I mean, really, it's here too. This is the characteristic equation. It's the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. And the characteristic polynomial is like the polynomial you get out of that. All right. Um, so now uh, for eigenvectors. So, um, I mean, basically the way this works is um, we go back to like the determinant of a minus lambda i, but now we plug in the lambdas that we know and we actually just um, get a, we do a row reduction problem and we get the um, kind of equation of a, like a, like a vector from that, okay? So um, this is what that looks like. So we have, uh, I'm just gonna do that. And we have like, um, so for lambda, I'm gonna call it lambda one equals four. So we would have, um, basically what we're doing is we're doing a minus now four i, um, whoops, no more lambda, sorry. A minus four i augmented with zero. And if you are REF that thing, you get one, negative one, uh, zero, and then zero, 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 right? And so what this is saying is that x1 equals x2, right? And so, you know, there's, you can talk about like the simplest eigenvector if you want or something, but really like it's giving you just instructions for what the eigenvector looks like. And so this instruction is that like really you just need the x1 component to look like the x2 component. So I would just pick 1, 1, but you could honestly pick like, you know, 3, 3 or something like that. All those kind of things are eigenvectors for this problem. Um, okay. Then likewise, if we do for lambda like 2, let's say is 2, uh, we're going to do a minus 2i augmented with 0, and we are ref that one we would get one, one, zero, 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 zero. And then uh, this is saying that x1 equals the negative of x2. And so like my second kind of eigenvector structure is um, just x1, if that equals like one, then um, x2 would have to be like negative one, right? And, um, and that's it. So, um, you know, these are the eigenvectors specific to, you know, these eigenvalues uh, here. All right, so just to see um, how this last problem kind of worked out here. So um, actually, I realized I kind of flipped things around on one of these, but that's fine. Um, so just to kind of show you the geometry behind what we just did. So um, this um, one, one vector right, which was like one of the eigenvectors I found here, um, that thing had an eigenvalue of four, right? So it would stretch it to here. Um, if you had, um, you know, the vector two, two, right, that would also be an eigenvector, and it would scale like all the way out to, you know, it's off the page there, but it would scale to four times two, um, and it'd be, you know, eight, eight. Um, and the other vector has like the structure um, of being basically on the line y equals negative x. The one that I t technically did was actually one negative one. If you go back 
if you look down here, I did one negative one, uh, which is an eigenvector. Um, and, but they, but I, I flipped it here, uh, which is kind of confusing, but th this, you know, also negative one, one could be the, the eigenvector. And it's saying that if you had negative one, one, then, and you apply the matrix A to it, then it's going to land at negative two, two, or two times that, uh, vector. Um, so, um, you know, that's what's happening. It's just, we have vectors that stay in their span, right, in their line, um, and they get stretched by, in this case, two or four. All right, um, so I wanna just do um, basically another one just to kind of, um, really I want you to see something kind of important here. Um, so I'm just going to do um, same kind of structure, find all eigenvalues and eigenvectors for A, as well as give um, here a basis for all eigenspaces, okay? Um, so we have to start with that determinant of A minus lambda I. All right, so we're going to do determinant of 2 minus lambda, and then 5, 0, 2 minus lambda. And we're going to set that uh, equal to 0. And so here we would have two minus lambda squared, um, you know, uh, minus zero times five uh, equals zero, right? And so the roots of this thing um, would be two, um, and it's repeated, right? It's got like a, it's like a double root. Um, so that's, that's one that actually only has like one, like unique eigenvalue. And there's a connection between this eigenvalue and this matrix. And I don't wanna give it all away right now, but I'm gonna ask this in class to see if anyone like um, sees a way to kind of spot um, eigenvalues quickly given certain kinds of matrices and like why that would happen that way. Um, and so there actually is a way in this structure of a matrix that I could have said the eigenvalues like really quickly and just like without doing any work. Um, so we'll talk about that, but there is a connection between this and this, but that is the eigenvalue. Those are the eigenvalues, just two repeated, all right? So now I'm gonna just do my eigenvector stuff. So a minus two i augmented with zero, um, and then I RRF this thing, and I get zero, one, zero, 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 all right? And so this is basically saying, this is saying y equals zero, but it's saying nothing about um, x. X can be like anything. There's no like conditions. So this is the one that we can just like parameterize to be like a t, and then y just needs to be zero. So my, um, my um, eigenvectors basically look like things that are just of the structure t and then zero, right? And um, the, you know, eigenspace, I didn't actually ask for this, but it would be the set of all, it'd be the span of all the vectors of that structure. Um, and then from that, you can kind of see that, like, if I wanted a basis for um, that eigenspace, okay, um, a basis could just be like the simple old, uh, I hat. You could just take that as like a general descriptor of the things in the eigenspace, right? Um, basically it's just the things on the x-axis here act as the, um, eigenspace. Um, and that's about it. Um, I just have one more quick kind of question. Um, and it's related to like, another one of these um, kind of intuitive problems. So this one. So find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A just geometrically. Um, and then the question says, can you solve the problem without doing any work? Uh, which I hope you can. Um, so they have this matrix, um, 2, 0, 0, 3. And um, that matrix, if you think about it in terms of where I hat and J hat land, right? This is where I hat lands. And so it's basically saying that like, 
it's saying this part. Um, horizontal things get stretched by a factor of two. And then this is where J hat lands, which has like the structure of um, J hat, but it's three times as big. So there is a vertical like stretch by three. That's what that matrix would do. Um, and so if you think about it that way, right, if you're stretching vertically and horizontally, that is kind of a clue as to the eigenvalues, right? And so my like eigenvalue, I can have an eigenvalue of two, and I can eigenvalue, whoops, jumping ahead here, of uh, three. And um, that's just because you were told that it stretches, you know, horizontally by two and vertically by uh, three. And then the vectors that it stretches are literally just, you know, for this one, um, it stretches like i hat by that. So i hat could be an eigenvector. And here it would stretch j hat by that. So j hat could be an eigenvector. Um, and again, like anything that's a scalar of this or this is an eigenvector. Um, and, you know, maybe I will say this really quick. Um, you know, if, if you think a x equals lambda x, um, I just said any scalar on i hat could be an eigenvector. Um, and so you could take like, you know, a uh, i hat equals lambda i hat, right? But you could also take, um, you know, input two, um, and you could get, so we'll just put like uh, two in here, two in here, and then we have like a two i hat equals lambda two i hat, um, and you could just like recreate the scalar to be something else, like you can multiply lambda and two and divide by two, you know, and it's just going to like take you right back to uh, lambda um, uh, I hat. So it scalars basically of any vector are still going to be considered eigenvectors because the scalars just cancel out on both sides. That's all that's happening. Um, so it's a little weird sometimes when we ask questions like, what is the eigenvectors? Because there's, there's going to be infinite amount of eigenvectors. Um, really the best question is like, what's a basis for the eigenspace? Um, that's something that's very specific like this. Because um, the basis will act as um, an eigenvector for the space. Um, and you could even go further and say, what's a, like, we could say unitary basis, meaning like a length one basis for the space, um, which this thing is like a unit vector, right? Um, but more on that later. So that is how you um, go about finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this is like a very important uh, slide to make sure you understand how I kind of go through those different steps.